Greetings, fellow cyberdogs and fellow Minecrafters and fellow mine squatches all over the world. This is Delacaba with Delacaba Presents Let's Play Minecraft, the Squatchcraft TFC2 mod pack. And I am out here in the water. If you didn't catch our first episode, it explained all the mods that are in this mod pack of mine, but more importantly, as we were in our little hidey hole doing some stuff, we got invaded by a skeleton and we had to run for it. And we are out here floating away. So here's a Minecraft high five with a ball of clay in your face. And hopefully, very, very soon, the mobs are going to start burning up. A morning fog. I think that we got one in the water over there. Yep. But our little hidey hole is right there under the sequoia trees. Very awesome that I'm a, I'm a Sasquatch and we're in the sequoias. You know, that's where the Patterson-Gimlin film, the famous Sasquatch footage from the 70s, was shot and was among the sequoias. So, we should be okay to head back into shore now. I'm hoping the sun is coming up. The mob should start burning. Some of them are going to be hiding under the trees. But there's, there's our little cherry tree right there. So, that means our hidey hole is here someplace close. We got a spider over there who sometimes are aggressive and sometimes aren't. It's kind of odd. It depends on, on kind of what they're, what the situation is. I believe that if they're in the dark, they're aggressive, and it's, that's just the way it is. All right, that spider is despawned. Let's see if we can make it back to our hidey hole. We were in the process of making items out of clay when we were attacked. Ah, there goes the morning fog. Okay. And so... Um, that got rather excitable, but I think I may have seen something very good over here. Yes, indeed. Is it, is it, or is that an ostrich fern? Oh, it's an ostrich fern. I thought it might be cord grass. Cord grass would allow us to make string. That's one of the custom recipes that I've added to this mod pack. But come on, where's my fresh water? We need to drink. And it's not letting us. What's going on here? Why is it not letting me drink? There we go. I'm right-clicking with an empty hand to drink from this water, but soon, if we don't get jumped again, we're going to be able to fire so some pottery and make ourselves some jugs. And okay, let's eat some of our cherries from our lovely cherry tree. Now, you may notice that there are two kinds of cattails. There's these ones here and these ones here. These cattails spawn as part of the freshwater spawning, and they're something you cannot harvest. These, however, are part of the plant mega pack, and they are harvestable. And that's a very good thing because, like the Native Americans, we're going to make use of the heads of those cattails to um, help us in our survival. But So I just grabbed that guy, so I'll be able to show you when the time comes. But first... We're going to come down here and pick up some of this driftwood. These sticks on the beach, they represent driftwood. Because we're definitely going to need more sticks. There we go. Let's see if we can locate our hidey hole again. Should be right over here. Over here amidst the clay. And it would appear that the skelly did follow us out. Whew. Wow, that, that shook me up. I'll tell you what, I didn't expect him to find his way in. Usually I'd take and i put a, a block, a wood block up above and then they don't accidentally drop in so I'll have to do that but let's get our inventory back open we had managed to make two clay jugs and a clay vessel as well as a large clay vessel before he fell in on us and we started shrieking and running for our lives um, we're gonna make ourselves an axe real quick as well as uh, making ourselves a hammer so first we're gonna make a hammer the hammer is the only early game weapon that is at all effective against um, skeletons. Skeletons are sensitive to crushing damage, um, well, naturally because they're made of bones, but we're going to nap this stone into the shape of an axe head. There we go, just so that we've got one, because the axe is effective against the zombies, and the uh, hammer is effective against the skeletons. But now, 
we are going to get back to working with our clay. So what I'm going to be doing here is in my crafting grid, I'm going to be placing a stick and a single ball of clay. And I might have that in the wrong, the wrong mat. Is it that way? There it is. This is going to create a clay spindle. We're going to fire that and it's going to burn the stick out. So we're going to have to take the spindle head and add it to a fresh stick. But with that spindle, we are going to be able to take and you see if I put the cattails here, now we've got the cattail spike. All right. Well, that cattail spike, we're going to be able to spin the fluff from that cattail spike into, into some string. That's one of my custom recipes. But first we have to have the clay spindle fired. But so let's see. That, so the, with the clay spindle, that's four objects, which fills one pit. The larger vessel fills a pit all of its own. Um, but we also need to use our clay to make some bowls. So we're just going to cut off all but the bottom two layers of clay and then knock out the bottom two corners and then knock out the three center pieces when the clay left over makes a bowl shape looking at it from the side and that'll give us two clay bowls. We're going to do that twice so that we have a total of four clay bowls because that will fill a full, a full pit. There we go. All right. So now we're going to go up and we're going to dig a pit. Well, first we're going to take and, and get some handles on our tool heads here. There we go. We got an axe. And there's our hammer. And I think we'll hold off um, on making anything else because we're going to go up here now. And we're going to use our knife to cut a bunch more of this thatch because we're definitely going to need it. It'll help us kind of clear some of this area here. And by left-clicking with the knife on the grass, it's going to give us straw. And we're going to need that to cook this pottery. All right. Now, I'm also going to just come over here, and I'm going to pick up these stones so that we have them. Because as soon as possible, if we're going to stay in this location any time at all, we need to get these closest trees cut down so that they don't provide cover for mobs. Let's just make sure we've got plenty plenty of this thatch there we go Ooh, what do we got over here red bell peppers great when they when they grow to the point that they're at least green we can eat them but we still got some cherries in our cherry tree if you didn't see the first episode you should go back and watch it because it talks all about all the different mods that are in this mod pack as well as showing us finding our original location getting dug in get a few more odds and ends here but now what we're going to do is we're going to take our shovel and we're going to dig one deep into the ground here and I'm going to dig three pits that are connected diagonally and we're going to make sure and pick up the clay out of them because we can use that to find clay look for the little goldenrod flowers here they indicate clay all right but what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be taking our clay items and getting them down in our hotbar so we can access them. And we're going to shift right click to place them down in these pits on the ground. Now, if you've made them and you've not yet gotten to the point where uh, you're ready to fire them, you can shift right click to just place them down on the ground so that they're not in your inventory and then you can shift right click to pick them back up again. But we've actually got, oh, there's one. I was going to say we've got room for two more items here. So we're going to place that water jug, and I guess as long as we've got the room, let's make one more of the small clay vessels. You just knock off the corners, and there it is, because we'll be able to do some storage with that. So there we go, place that guy down in there. Now what we're going to be doing is taking our clay, or no, I'm sorry, our uh, straw that we gathered up, and we're just going to right-click, and it's going to fill the bottom of that pit up with straw. Just click until it stops adding any in. And then we're going to take our sequoia logs here. And it's going to take eight logs per pit. So we're going to be seven logs short. All right. So what we're going to need to do is make ourselves one more axe, because it's probably going to take two axes to cut down a sequoia tree. So we're going to make ourselves another axe head. 
damage is. So we've got two fresh axes to work from. Hello, go in there. Thank you. Having a little bit of trouble with my left mouse button here. It's double clicking on me for some reason. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, we had we were gonna fire the clay spindle. Ooh. Okay. Well, I guess we will we will get there. But we are gonna come over here. Uh, what's the closest sequoia to us? This one here. We want to get this knocked down so that we don't get mobs hiding under it. And tree capitator or the tree capitator effect is one of the things we have. So as we chop this bottom block, it'll start chopping on the whole tree. Now, as you can see, it did drop just a couple blocks, but we've still got the majority of the tree there. So that's why we needed the second axe, because it wore our first stacks out completely, taking down this big old giant sequoia. Pop, there we go. So now we've got lots and lots of sequoia logs. Let's come on over and fill in this pit. And I guess, you know... I'm going to dig a fourth pit. We've got the materials to handle it, and I really do want to cook up this clay spindle. So let's put the clay spindle down there. Let's grab this clay out of there first, though. So we're going to shift-click to place that spindle, and as long as we've got a pit that has room for three more items, let's um, start making some tool molds. Let's make a pick mold, and let's make a saw mold. The saw is the first tool you should always go for. Alright, and let's make... Let's make another water jug. There's a chance that they can break when you're, you, when you're drinking from them. And so let's just make a backup, and that'll fill up this pit completely. And then we'll be able to uh, fire these guys here. Alright, so here we go. We're going to place our pick mold, we're going to place our jug, we're going to place our saw mold, get to our straw and fill that up, fill it up with our eight logs, and now here's our fire starter, remember that's just two sticks at an angle in your crafting grid to create it, and we're going to start this one down on this end and it'll touch off all of them, and that's why we dig them at an angle like that, and we're going to put that guy right there so that hopefully we don't get another skeleton dropping in. But we're going to have to dig down one deeper here to get in now. There we go. But the clay is useful, so it's worth having. And I really honestly think that maybe it's just a, to our advantage to drop that guy right there, just in case. <laughs> I don't want another skelly making his way in here. But now our wood here stacks to 16 logs. And we can actually create log piles to store our wood. So over here in the corner, if I'm holding, if, I, if I'm on my hot bar where I've got my logs, and I shift right click, it's going to start a wood pile. Now if I just continue to right click, you'll notice up above in, in our, where it says log pile, you can see how many logs are actually in there, and it'll hold 16. See, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So a full stack of 16 logs will pile up. Now we're going to make another one, shift, click, and then just continue right-clicking until all 16 logs are stored. And I'm going to make another wood pile here, shift, click, and right-click to just fill it in until all 16 logs are stored. And what do we got left here for wood? We've got 10 sequoia logs left. All right. Let's see how we're doing on sticks. We've only got one stick here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take and put down two of these sequoia logs. And, you know, I mean, you can do it with just a single log, but I'm putting down two. But if I take my hammer and I beat on these logs, when they break, it's going to give us two sticks. Pop, there we go. So now we've got five sticks. And the reason that's important is because I want to take one of these sticks right-click our torch, and that's going to give us another torch. That way, if these burn out, we'll be able to relight them off of the torch we have in our inventory. But we've also got some sticks so we can, like, make us a, a new knife here. There we go.
go. Get our axe down here. And let's see, we've got eight pieces of wood left over, huh? I think we're going to right-click our fire. We're just going to drop like four of those into our fire space. Just so that we know we've got a few in there. And then we're going to shift-click and put these last ones in this log pile. Now you can click a lock you can right click a log pile with an empty hand and it'll show you how many logs are in that log pile so that's pretty handy to know all right but all right so we'll have to chop that one out when the morning comes to be able to get out again but i don't want another skelly coming in here if the skelly drops in and he walks into the thatch he won't be able to see us in here the thatch will keep him from seeing us and we'll be safe i just i didn't think they'd end up falling in here so that was pretty excitable that's why we started in the water of course but, so we can still hear our fire burning out there, so our clay is still cooking. It's really not safe for us to collect it out of the pit until the morning anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here, and I will be back when the morning comes, or all hell breaks loose. Alright guys, I am back. Man, it's 10 in the morning, but I could not leave because I had a skelly underneath one of the trees right outside. And if I'd have come up, he'd have shot me in the face and he finally despawned. Holy cow. But there we go. You can see all our pottery is officially done. And we're just gonna we're just gonna break it. We're not, and this will not break the pottery. All it'll do is just release it to us. We could shift right click to pick it up but on with a empty spot in our hot bar. But we're just gonna do it this way because it'll allow us to pick it all up very quickly. And the bowls will stack, which is cool. But all right, guys, so let's take a look. We have got water jugs. We're going to take and get those down here in our hot bar because we're going to need those immediately. All right. We're also going to get this large vessel down here in our hot bar. The rest of this we're going to worry about in a minute, but we're going to go down to our water source. Where we've got that large vessel in our hands, and I'm going to right-click on the water. Now what that's done is that's filled this container with water, the, the big storage container. But you notice I got red letters that say overburdened. And if I try to walk, I can't. I'm stuck in place. So I have to open up my inventory and take that large vessel and put it in my back slot. And now you can see I can move freely. But we're going to take our water jugs and just right click the water. And that's going to fill them. And then we also right click to drink from them. Ooh, there we go. And you can hear if you try to drink from it when it's empty. <laughs> I like that. Keeps me from getting bored some nights when I'm stuck in my hole in the ground. But there we go. Now we have got water jugs. We're going to come down inside our hidey hole here. And we're going to open our inventory, take that large vessel off our back, put it in our hot bar, and we're just going to right-click to place it. Now if we right-click it, you can see... We've got an interface here. It says fresh water, and if I click unseal, you can see that we can actually see the water there, and we could fill our jugs by just taking a jug in our hand and right-clicking on that. We can also fill a jug by putting a jug here in this space and clicking this arrow so that it changes, hello, changes to out, and that'll fill the jug. But right now we got it on in, so we could, if this was, was missing some water, we could put one of our water jugs in here, and because it's set on in, it would transfer the water in. But we can also add and remove water by right-clicking with a bucket or with a jug. All right. Now, we've got our ceramic vessels here. And these ceramic vessels can also be placed on the ground by shift right-clicking. But we're going to put down one of our water jugs and another of our water jugs just to keep them on backup. Because our water jugs can break as we're using them. And so we're going to keep those in case something happens. If we go to our ceramic vessel and we right-click, you'll see we have four storage slots, and we can put small items in, in there. For instance, like the pick mold. Can we? I think, well, we're going to store our small spalerite. Why is none of this going? There we go. And we can store our bowls, I think. Or Nope, they're medium-sized, are they? Huh. I wonder why they won't go in there. They're supposed to go in there because they're small. But they're not doing it. But we can store our thatch in there, our cattail spikes, and, and small items. We can store dirt, gravel. But we use those for storage for food, especially to uh, keep that food from going back. 
bad, I should say. But right now, we're just going to drop those guys down there on the ground so they're out of our inventory. Um, and we need to do a couple of things. Uh, first, we want to get the pick mold and the saw mold out of our inventory. And we can do that again by shift right clicking and it'll put it down on the ground. I believe we can also do the same thing with the spindle head. But we don't want to do that because what we're going to do is we're going to shift right click to pick that back up. We're going to put a stick up in our inventory as well as a spindle head and that's going to give us the spindle. Now, we are going to go out and we're going to see if we can find some cattails. First thing we're going to do is mark this as our home. If I click B, it's going to bring up our new waypoint and I'm just going to mark it home so we don't get lost and enter. We'll make it solid and now we've got that but we're going to look for some of the plant mega pack cattails oh look at that we've got some bamboo over there but it looks like some of the bell peppers are already growing so if i have the knife in my hand and i right click oh no i guess not i guess it's left click there we go we can harvest that and we've got the bell pepper and the bell pepper seeds If we just break it, all we'll get is the seeds. We won't get the food. But you can see over there, there's some bamboo. That's pretty cool. But I was hoping to find some more of the plant mega pack cattails. But I'm not seeing any. Ooh, the sun's getting low already. Man, the days go fast. Let's grab the stick. Now, if you need sticks and you can't find any laying on the ground, just come to a tree. You can use a stick, but your knife will actually work better for you. And just cut the foliage and you'll start to get sticks. You may also get um, saplings, which is very useful. This is white cedar, huh? That's cool. Get this one that fell over there. We're just going to cut this, get us a few more sticks so we got them. There we go. Oh, and there's a white cedar sapling. Now I'm also going to pick up a whole bunch of rocks because we're going to need to make a bunch of axes so that I'm going to pick up this failure right here so we can store that away in one of our, our jugs. We're going to want to pick up as many rocks as possible just because we're going to have to make several axes so we can chop down a bunch of these sequoia trees. The sequoia trees are going to give us a lot of, um, of raw wood, of course, number one. And number two, like I say, it's going to keep mobs from being able to hide under the trees. I, we, I had a skelly who was hiding right over here under this tree, and I was worried he was going to shoot me in the face when I came out. But I have to head back down here. And I think what we're going to do is we are going to bring this episode to an end. First, we're going to munch a little red bell pepper. Munch, 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 and it's gone. Finish off with some cherries. Have a nice drink of water. And now I'm going to right click on here to fill my jug. And then I'm going to right click with an empty hand or with anything other than a jug and just click seal so that that's sealed up. And there we go. Well, thank you guys for joining me for episode two of the Squatchcraft TFC2 playthrough that I'm doing here. The link to download it will be in the video description below. Oop, one of our torches just went out, though. Hold on. If we uh, have one of our torches in hand, we can walk up to a dead torch. We can right-click it, and it'll relight that torch. If a torch is lit, you can break it and replace it and it'll now burn for 48 hours. You can see it 48 hours remaining, 47 hours remaining. But you want to always keep a, a torch in your inventory to relight torches, and if a torch is out and you break it, it just vanishes, it's gone. So anyway, thank you for joining me, Dilakaba, for this episode of the Squatchcraft TFC2 mod playthrough. The download link will be below the uh, video in the description, and I hope you guys will download this mod to play on Technic and play along with me. So you guys have a good one. Here's a Minecraft high five with a torch in your face. And I am out. Peace.